SOC microservices. So back in the prior millennium, we learned how to program computers and figured out that we needed a good way to design applications. Came up with OO design, essentially designing applications as a collection of objects that can interact with each other. In this millennium, we took it the next step. We said, gee, those objects don't have to be in one big executable. We can make them independent services. And so came service-oriented architecture as an approach. And now what we're seeing is microservices. We have taken the idea of service-oriented architecture to the extreme. You can think of microservices as being SOA on steroids. That's really what we have here is an extreme version of service-oriented architecture. And that results in something like Netflix. Thousands and thousands of services all interacting with each other, uh, which gives us kind of a crazy picture. OO design is actually what makes it reasonable, makes it workable, and indeed the OO design principles are what make microservices not just workable, but actually a good idea. So let's take a look at these OO design principles here. So let's start first with the heart of this, which is the idea of encapsulation. You hide the details of what's going on inside the service. The service presents an interface, it has a shell, a skin, and other services don't need to worry about what's going on inside that service. That then gives rise to the concept of loose coupling. The connections between these services are well-defined interfaces that allow them to interact without getting into the details of each other. That then means that I can make changes to one service without it really breaking another. The solid principles. So S, single responsibility. Each service has a particular reason for being, one thing that it does. And one thing that it does well, nice, small, and simple. The O, the open closed principle. The services are open to being extended, but they're closed to change. And the reason why they need to be closed to change is so that we don't screw up their relationship with other services by changing what they do. That gives rise to Liskov substitution. If I'm going to derive a new version of the service from an old one, that new version has to be substitutable for the old one. Again, so we don't mess up those relationships among the services, allowing us to actually make the changes we need. Uh, I is for interface uh, uh, segregation, essentially saying we don't want one big fat interface that's trying to service all the needs. We have different specialized interfaces, again, simplifying and making sure it's going to work right. And then D is for dependency inversion. I don't focus on the thing. I actually have a dependency on an abstraction of that thing, which allows me to make changes to the thing without messing up the other services that are dependent upon it. This concept that come from the idea of loose coupling was highlighted in the 2017 State of DevOps report. They basically said this is a necessity if we're going to achieve the promise of DevOps. Loosely coupled architectures, the way we build our systems, and how we organize our organizations, loosely coupled teams. Indeed, applying the principles of OO design to our systems and to the teams that are making our systems. Amazon has done this. Amazon has, has adopted SOA in a very big way, not just Amazon Web Services, but all of Amazon is built using a service-oriented architecture, and each service is owned and managed by a small team. So they've applied the principles of OO design both to the architecture of their system and to the teams that manage those things. Observing Conway's law, which says architecture of systems and architecture of organizations are related. The lean methods, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the lean, uh, uh, yeah, community has given us these key tenets here. That if we're going to achieve quality, if we're going to achieve customer sat, we need to be working in small batches. Service-oriented architecture, and indeed microservices, gives us that opportunity now, creating a new service extending a service, fixing a bug in a service, are always going to be small chunks of work, which are going to enable us then to do it quickly and easily. So the what of microservices, they are systems built of many, many small services designed around object-oriented design principles. And the reason why is because that gives us tremendous flexibility in how we maintain things and indeed allows us to apply DevOps principles and actually make it work on a huge scale. That's the what and the why.